Super 5702. Five, seven, seven, oh, Dave, we have stuff that even the Mossad doesn't know we have. And he specifically mentioned them. He goes, they know pretty much everything we do. They don't know. We have stuff that can literally change a person's DNA. We have stuff that can turn them into zombie acting characters. And he said, watch this drill that we do in two weeks. And it was the October 31st, 2012 drill in San Diego. And I actually have this on one of my stories where people were dressed up with makeup artists to act like zombies, and they were being uh, shot down in a simulation. And it was a FEMA DHS uh, civil control drill in San Diego. And they reported it on the San Diego TV stations, and they made a joke out of it because it was Halloween and zombies and, and all this stuff. But I he remember said, that. We, yeah. He said, we have the ability to make people behave this way. And he said, and we use the chemtrails, nanotechnology, he said, it's all here. Now, we've heard before of chips being implanted in the body, but here at Reading University, they're looking at something else. What happens when one of those chips gets a computer virus? Well, here's Dr. Mark database. Gasson. But this technology has really developed over the last five or ten years. And um, really, now we should consider these devices to be more like little computers. They can store information, manipulate information, do simple computations. So when we're implanting this type of device, really we're in, implanting a, like a miniature computer. Now you've actually got a chip implanted in your hand, haven't you? Yeah, I have yeah, one there. in my hand. What that allows me to do is, for example, have secure access to the building. Um, it allows me to use my mobile phone because it can recognise, the, the phone can recognise me via the chip, but no one else can use my phone. Risks. So these are... Just show us what, what you've done to that, that chip. Well, what I can do is actually read the contents of the device. This last part of all the information inside the device is actually a computer virus. So what this allows um, the chip to do is when it accesses a system, the system reads the contents and then gets infected by the virus. And then any other device using the system then becomes infected by the virus as well. Now you've given the chip a virus, why should that matter? As we look to the future, um, I think this sort of technology, um, implantable technologies, is actually going to become fairly commonplace. If we look at medical technologies, for example, heart pacemakers, um, this is a, a deep brain stimulator unit which is implanted in the chest and actually has electrodes that go into the centre of the brain. If we look at these types of applications of implantable technology, there are benefits, but there are also risks associated with that. So we're looking at a future where you could have uh, some advanced medical device inside you and that could be in infected by some other chip inside you. Yeah, that's right. That, that's quite possible. And equally, someone who's carrying an infected medical device could feasibly infect someone else. So we, we've got a future where we could all become one sort of great big walking uh, computer infected with a virus. That's quite possible. <laughs> we have stuff that can literally change a person's DNA, we have stuff that can turn them into zombie acting characters. Now, tell those people who got the RFID and lost the presence of the Holy Spirit, how does it feel like? And they'll tell you. Uh, she doesn't have the presence of God no more anyway. Brothers and sisters, they are losing the Holy Spirit in their life. So you know it's got to be serious, right? If they're losing the Holy Spirit on their life as they get the RFID, something is wrong then. Something is wrong. You got to put it together, brothers and sisters. That's what this pastor testified. Of all the people in his church that got the RFID, they're all complaining they lost the Holy Spirit. That's the number one complaint they have. And that's why this pastor was investigating that. Now the sister also don't have the presence of God on her. And she just got the RFID uh, in the hospital. Tell them not to trust the government. Don't trust your doctor. Don't trust your government. The Lord told that to me. He spoke that to me and said, tell them not to trust the government. And I, but one thing this pastor noticed, once they get the IFID, they lose the Holy Spirit, the presence of God in their life. And now these people from the churches that got the IFID, they wonder why did the Holy Spirit leave them? 
Come on, someone. Why did the Holy Spirit lead people, Christ, Christian people, who get the RFID? Like that young man, the Holy Spirit used to talk to him. He had it since he was young. And as soon as he got the RFID, left him. They just move out of his life. And he feels so empty, he says. He feels so empty. Is this stuff real or not? So you, you have to put it together. Like this pastor is putting it together in the U.S. When most of his as members of his church are guiding the IFID, and they don't feel the Holy Spirit no more. They don't feel the presence of God no more. And they're asking the pastor why. And he doesn't have a, 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 a good answer for them. The reason they're asking is, who has a good answer for the IFID? Someone please give us a good answer. Why is the Holy Spirit leaving them? Revelation 16, 2. And the first went, and poured out his vial upon the earth, and there fell a noisome and grievous sore upon the men which had the mark of the beast, and upon them which worshipped his image. Noisome as explained in the free dictionary.com. Noisome. 1. Offensive to the point of arousing disgust, foul, a noisome odor. 2. Harmful or dangerous, noisome fumes. Noisome. Causing or able to cause nausea. A nauseating smell. A sickening stench. If you have given up on your church and want real revelations, get the outstanding book, I Left Church to Find God, available now on Amazon.com.